Alrighty, hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about <clears throat> um, deontology, um, that I that broad idea of deontology in general. Um, deontology is often uh, understood sort of in juxtaposition to consequentialism. Right, last class we talked about how consequentialism is a form of uh, moral evaluation where we look at the outcomes of an action to determine if that action is good or bad. Um, consequentialists disagree on what outcomes we should want. Um, and we look at, specifically at utilitarians who wanted to increase the overall happiness for the greatest number of people over the greatest period of time. Deontologists are sort of uh, antithetical to that. They're sort of opposite of that. Um, instead of looking at the outcome of an action to determine if it was good or bad, they have a set of duties or a set of rules that they think uh, need to be followed. Deontologists have a wide range of beliefs and even religious practices and stuff. It's, it's really hard to kind of nail down exactly what a deontologist believes. Um, same way it's kind of hard to nail down exactly what a consequentialist believes. The one thing that all deontologists have in common is they believe that there's a set of rules or practices um, or laws that we should follow. Uh, and if we follow those laws, um, that's how we know if something an action was good or bad. In fact, the word uh, uh, deont means duty. It's a Greek word for duty. But a lot of religions are deontological. Uh, all the Abrahamic religions are deontological, right? They have commandments, uh, they have duties, um, and it's important that practitioners of those beliefs follow those duties, uh, regardless of circumstance, regardless of outcome, um, regardless of anything. But not only religions. Um, if any of you like Marcus Aurelius or Stoicism, uh, that's a deontological uh, ethic. That's a way of determining if your actions are good or bad by a duty that you follow. And the duty is to control yourself, um, to not lose yourself to your emotions, regardless of what the circumstances or the outcome are. Bushido, the Japanese samurai uh, deontological code is deontological. They have a set of rules. They have a set of customs that they have to follow regardless of the circumstances. To the point uh, that they commit suicide, um, you know, uh, obviously, a consequentialist would probably almost never suggest that we commit suicide, but uh, Bushido uh, practitioners have a point where they think you should commit suicide. Chivalry, uh, Western chivalry, is very famously deontological. There's a set of practices, a set of beliefs that uh, you have to follow in order to be uh, good. Uh, so deontological ethics is pretty pervasive and a lot of people when they first hear about like rules-based ethics they kind of brush it off but uh you know i feel like we actually use rule-based ethics in a lot of areas of our life like for example um relationships uh, romantic relationships especially um uh, a lot of people approach that in a very deontological way there's a set of rules there's a set of laws there's a set of practices that you must follow and if you don't it doesn't matter what the circumstances or the outcomes are but if you don't follow those then you're like a bad person uh, cheating is a great example of this. You can never, ever cheat, ever. It's bad, um, no matter what. Um, <clears throat> there, we might think there's some caveats, some small times where cheating is okay, but for the most part, a lot of people really think that there are certain laws, like no cheating, that you have to follow in a romantic relationship. And of course, there's people who take a more utilitarian or, or consequentialist approach to relationships as well. That's probably pretty pervasive too. Um, in fact, it seems like we actually kind of get our wires crossed, right? Nobody really follows like one set of principles. So what's important for deontological ethicists across the board is that you have good intentions when you are doing an action. And the way you determine if your intentions are good or not is if you were trying to follow the rules, the laws, the principle. That's what it means to be good intention. If you're trying for the best possible outcome, well, that's not really good intentions because the best possible outcome is not a good way to evaluate uh, whether something is ethical or not. Um, the way to evaluate is your adherence to the rules. So good intentions are you're wanting to adhere to the rules. That's what we determine, or that's what we use to determine if someone or if an action was good or bad. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, should we be following a set of rules um, in order to determine if, uh, if our actions are good or bad? Uh, and if so, uh, what set of rules should we follow? And how do we know that those rules are the set of rules that we should follow? Um, all right, looking forward to hearing y'all's thoughts.